Does your home battery work differently in the cold? When the temperature plummets, so does the performance of your home storage battery. And that comes as a surprise to lots of people that have invested in a system like this. In this video, we're unpacking what really happens in your battery when it gets cold and sharing some practical tips to help you get the best performance out of your battery even when the weather turns against you. So, do home batteries work differently in the cold? Lots of people think that when the battery's charged, that's it. It should just deliver that energy no matter what the temperature is. So what's really going on here? To find out, we need to look beyond the graphs and dive into the battery chemistry and see how home battery storage systems actually work. And do we need to find ways to make your battery more efficient when it's cold? Is it counterintuitive to use the very energy you're storing to optimize the energy you're storing? But before we get to all of that, I really want to hear from you. Have you come across any issues with batteries in the cold? Did you notice any change in performance and what did you do to overcome it? Let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to see what people are doing out there. So to understand why this happens, we need to first look at how installation practices have evolved over the last few years. In many regions, fire safety guidance and building standards have influenced where home battery storage systems are being installed. For practical and safety reasons, home battery storage systems are being installed outside of the living space or in remote uninsulated areas such as garages, utility rooms and weatherproof enclosures. That keeps them separated from occupied areas but also exposes the battery to a wider range of ambient temperatures. Hot in the summer but cold in the winter. Those temperature swings have a big impact on how the battery performs. They affect its usable capacity, how much energy it can actually store as well as how quickly it can deliver and accept charge. In other words, temperature directly influences the amount of energy you can draw and the speed in which you can top it back up. So in fixing a safety problem, we've now introduced a performance problem because those batteries are now spending the winter in the cold. And even when the temperature plummets, the most advanced of battery systems can behave very differently. So why does temperature affect batteries so much? Well, first it's worth quickly looking at how they actually work. A battery is made up of multiple cells, each containing an anode and a cathode. Between them is a liquid or gel known as an electrolyte, which acts like a motorway for charged particles. When the battery charges, lithium ions move from the cathode to the anode and they get stored there. When it discharges, oh, those adds. ions flow back, releasing the energy as electrical current. It's a constant two-way flow, all controlled from the battery management system. And we'll look more at BMSs in a second. This entire process all depends on how freely those ions can move. When it's cold, the electrolyte thickens and the ions slow down. Oh, it's, really freezing. it's like trying to swim through treacle instead of water. The resistance in the cell increases and the battery finds it hard harder to charge or discharge at the same rate. So it still works, but just not as effectively. And that's why a system that performed perfectly in the summer can feel sluggish on those frosty mornings. If you drive an EV, you've probably seen the same thing. A full charge in the winter doesn't give you the same range as it would in the summer. And that's the same chemistry at work. The cold slows down the movement of those ions. So whether it's a car or a home battery system, you get the same result. Less available energy until it warms up again. And if that temperature drops any further, that's when the BMS has to step in to protect the batteries. Many systems, like this one from Sunsync, will automatically step in to protect the cells from damage. Because if you try and charge a very cold lithium battery, you risk something called lithium plating, where metallic lithium builds up on the anode surface. Under normal conditions, lithium ions will fit neatly onto the layers of graphite on the anode. And this is how the battery stores energy safely. But when that temperature falls too low, the ions slow down and the anode can't absorb them fast enough. Some ions will collect electrons too early and become metallic lithium forming on the surface of the anode and not inside, a little bit like frost on a window. And once that happens, two problems appear. First, that plated lithium permanently reduces the storage capacity. Second, it can form needle-like dendrites that can pierce the separator, causing short circuits or in some serious cases, thermal runaway. But fortunately, that's where temperature control systems step in, what we call the BMS or the battery management system. The BMS is effectively the brain of the battery storage system. It doesn't physically control the charge or discharge current, but it does track what's happening inside every single cell. Things like temperature, voltage, state of charge, to keep the system operating safely. When it turns cold, the BMS communicates with the inverter, telling it to slow down, adjust, or even pause charging and discharging to protect the cells. In other words, it's the built-in safety net that keeps the battery healthy, efficient, and protected, no matter what the temperature outside is doing. And every modern system, like this one from Sunsync, 
constantly monitors and controls temperature to protect those batteries. So let's see how we can get the best out of our batteries even when it turns a tad chilly. The performance rating of a battery is based on an ambient temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius. But ambient temperature only tells part of the story. When a battery is charging or discharging, some of that energy is lost as heat. In cold conditions, that self-heating effect can actually help keep those cells a little bit warmer, as long as the battery is being used. However, there is an important detail we need to be aware of. Most lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries can't be charged if the temperature falls below zero degrees Celsius. So if you've installed a battery system straight out of the van on a frosty morning, then the BMS will kick in and not allow it to charge. But that doesn't mean you can't use it. If the battery does hold some charge, it could still deliver energy, although not necessarily at its full stated discharge rate. So does any of this actually matter? Well it can, especially here in the UK. During a typical winter temperatures will drop below zero on several days, sometimes for longer spells in certain regions. But it's not the same everywhere. If you're in the city then the urban heat island usually means it's a few degrees warmer than what it would be in the countryside. But there are a few practical things you can do to help. If possible install the battery in the garage or shed rather than completely outside. Even a slight increase in ambient temperature can make a big difference and if you know a cold snap is coming try and keep the battery in use a bit of charge and discharge activity helps generate internal warmth which in turn improves its ability to recharge and charge efficiently remember that most lithium batteries prefer to work in an ambient temperature between 50 and 30 degrees Celsius so the chemistry is being forced to work far from ideal conditions and that's a challenge for lots of installers as more systems move outdoors keeping them efficient during the winter does become part of the job Oh, and by the way, if there's something that you would like us to feature in a future video, then be sure to send your questions to willittrip at efix.co.uk. That's where today's question came from, and we might be able to feature yours in a future video. So those top tips to keep your battery performing at its best is to keep your battery performing. Every time it charges and discharges, it releases about 10% of energy as heat, and that internal warmth protects the cells, especially overnight. Next tip, use off-peak charging. Some tariffs offer cheaper rates from midnight to 5 a.m. and that can also be when the battery's at its coldest. Charging during that window helps keep the cells warm and ready for the day whilst also reducing energy costs. If the battery empties by midday and sits idle it has plenty of time to cool down. Shorter, frequent top-ups help keep it active and stable. Location matters as well. If your battery is going outside try and mount it under eaves or in sheltered spots to try and protect it from frost and wind. A ventilated enclosure, wooden or composite adds insulation while also keeping it dry. But if your battery is in a garage, outhouse or small cabin, could adding a small heater help? It's a fair question. Heaters use energy and we don't want to waste stored power just trying to keep the battery warm. So let's run the numbers. We looked at what it would take to heat a small enclosure, roughly about one and a half cubic meters in size, if the temperature dropped to around zero degrees Celsius. So apparently a 120 watt heater could heat that amount of air to 25 degrees in roughly six minutes. It would use roughly 0.013 kilowatts of energy to do that. Now that sounds great because it's not using a lot of energy, but that's just heating the air. The moment you factor in walls, metal casing, cables, and constant heat loss to the outside, the picture changes completely. To actually maintain that temperature in cold outdoor conditions, the heater would need to run almost constantly, and that quickly makes the idea impractical. The energy cost outweighs the benefit, especially when the power is coming from the very battery you're trying to protect. The real key is to keep those cells working. When the battery is charging and discharging, it's naturally generating a little bit of internal heat. So rather than relying on a heater, focus on keeping the system active and not letting it sit idle during colder weather conditions. That simple habit will help protect your battery's performance and lifespan during those colder months. But in reality, we don't have to do an awful lot because of those protections built in to batteries, especially this one from Sunsync. If it gets too cold, the system's gonna throttle it back to protect that battery chemistry. And if the temperature keeps dropping, it will pause charging completely until it's safe to continue. That's also where systems like Sunsync's W-Series battery range really stand out. The W-Series 
series is built around a lithium iron phosphate chemistry which gives you a long cycle life and inherently stable performance. Each module offers 10.64 kilowatt hours of usable storage and they're designed to work in high power applications where space can be limited. They include a fully integrated battery management system that continuously monitors voltage, current and temperature at cell level. The BMS doesn't just protect the battery but it actively balances the charge and discharge across each cell to extend its lifespan. From a performance point of view, the W series supports up to 1C charging and 1.25C discharge, delivers around 6,000 cycles at 90% depth of discharge and comes with a 10 year warranty as standard. They're also designed for real world installations. Natural cooling, an IP65 rating and an operating temperature range from minus 20 to 55 degrees Celsius which makes them suited to garages, outbuildings and outdoor locations. And if capacity needs to grow, the modular design allows multiple units to be connected in parallel, scaling from a single home system right up to a larger residential or commercial installation. All of that means that the protection we've been talking about isn't just theoretical, it's built directly into the hardware, working quietly in the background, whatever the weather's doing outside. But what do you think? Have you had issues with batteries in cold weather? And what did you do to overcome them? Let me know in the the comments. And if you want to find out more about charging and discharging rates, commonly known as the C rating, then click the video on screen now.